I want to start off by reviewing some of what we did last Friday um, with the algebraic numbers and algebraic operations. The common name used for algebraic numbers is algebraic terms. And some of the things we did with them last week is we looked at combining like terms, terms that had the same name that could be combined with different operations. And remember, when you add or subtract, we can only combine things with addition and subtraction that have the same name. When it comes to algebraic numbers, that means they must have the same variables and the same powers. And they must be exactly identical. <coughs> if I add 8x squared plus 3x, can I combine those? Why can't I combine them? Well, if you think of this as having 8 square inches and 3 inches, they're different things. A square inch is a unit of area, where a regular inch is just a unit of length. It's a linear unit. Same here. An x squared and an x are different names. We cannot combine those with addition or subtraction. In fact, we even looked at the place values and the fact that really those variables and their powers are like place values in our decimal number system. So if I have a complex situation like 12x squared y minus 3 x squared y squared plus 7x squared y plus 5xy squared plus 7x squared y squared. Looking at this, they all look very, very similar. But they're not because of the powers. So this is all addition and subtraction across through here. <coughs> I have the 12x squared y. What other term can I combine that with here? The 7, right here, 7x squared y. Perfect. Is that a positive 7 or a negative 7? Positive, because there's a plus in front of it. Remember that operation that's in front of the term is also an indicator of its, its sign, whether it's positive or negative. So 12 and 7 make 19. Is this going to be x squared, or does it become x to the fourth? stays x squared and it stays y because when we add or subtract we keep the same name our negative 3 x squared y squared can we combine that with anything perfect the 7 x squared y squared negative 3 and a positive 7 make careful you're thinking multiplication I'm adding and I have a negative 3 and a positive 7, I get positive 4. There we go. And the variable stays the same, x squared, y squared. And, of course, we just have this 5xy squared left over, so that stays as positive 5xy squared. <coughs> if we have... eight x to the third plus three x squared minus twelve x and we add to that four x to the third minus x squared plus six x if you recall we write this out just like we would whole numbers putting the second number underneath the first lining up the place values so the four x to the third goes under the 8x to the third. The negative x, when I think of it as a negative 1x, goes under the negative 3x squared. It's negative 1x squared. 
The positive 6x goes under the negative 12x. And this is addition, so we're adding down the column. So negative 12x plus 6x is? Negative 6. Negative 6x. Good. 3x squared plus negative 1x squared? Positive 2x squared. 8x to the third plus 4x to the third? Twelve x cubed. Good. Okay. <coughs> Subtraction is where it got pretty tricky on us. We may have five x squared minus nineteen x plus three minus. 2x squared plus 15x minus 9. So again, we set it up just like we would any other addition or subtraction. We put the second number under the first, lining up the place values. 2x squared goes under 5x squared. 15x goes under negative 19x. Negative 9 goes under positive 3. And we are now subtracting down each column. So careful with these. 3 minus a negative 9 becomes 3 plus 9 or 5 of 12. Good. Negative 19 minus 15. That becomes negative 19 plus a negative 15. Negative 19 and negative 15 make 34. negative 34. Good. And that's still x. And 5 minus 2 is 3x squared. Perfect. <coughs> Want to work with our powers a little bit. Or with our multiplication a little bit, I should say. So we might have x plus 5 times 3x minus 2. <coughs> now there was FOIL that we could do, the first, outside, inside, and last. But we could also just set it up and do long multiplication. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. 3 times 5x is 15x. That's going to go under the x. Remember, we leave a, a blank spot here. And 3x times x is 3x squared. Then we combine what we can. So we've got the negative 10. Negative 2 and 15 make positive 13x. And 3x squared. <clears throat> Any questions so far? I want to see if you guys remember how to do this one. So in your notes, try that one. 4x times, in the parentheses, 12x plus 2y. I'll give you about a half a minute to get that one. Okay, so this one, we could write it out and do the long multiplication. But you guys all seem pretty comfortable with distributing, so let's just go ahead and do that. 4x times 12x is? Forty-eight. X squared, good. 4x times 2y? Positive 8xy, perfect. Good job. Is it yx or xy? Usually we go xy just because of alphabetical order, but it could be yx. It wouldn't make a difference. <coughs> so I'm going to try this one quick.
So, again, multiply the numbers. 8 times 12 is 96. Then each variable separately. x to the third times x squared. Careful. When you multiply exponents, you add the powers. Very good. 3 plus 2 is 5. I heard, I sorry, I thought I heard 6, sorry. Y to the third. Very good. I think it has Y to the 1, so 1 plus 2 is 3. So if we were going to divide, my number's correct here, 32 x to the 4th, z to the 3rd, over 8 x, z squared. <coughs> 32 divided by 8 is 4. x to the Third, very good. We think of that as 1, so 4 minus 1 is 3. And how about the z? z to the 1 or just z? 3 minus 2 is 1, so it's z to the 1 or just z. So then how about something like this? It's a division, but we're divide, dividing a multi-digit number by that single-digit number. To me, it's easier if I rewrite this like this. Stick with me, guys. Okay. So here we're going to divide each term by the 5x. 25x to the third divided by 5x is going to be what? 25 divided by 5 is 5x to the second. Very good. Think of this as x to the 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 15x squared divided by 5x. Negative 3. How about the variable? How about the x? Just x. Very good. <coughs> 30x divided by 5x? Positive 6. The x's cancel out. So that is it. Okay. So that's kind of a quick review of the stuff we did last class. Um, I believe I gave you pages... 333, 334 out of the big book, and then 335, 336. You will continue when work time comes around here. Still in the big book. You'll be working on pages 339 through 340. That is exercise 13-4. And page 342... 343, exercise 13-5. So that's kind of just wrapping up the stuff we did last Friday. <coughs> this is also the material you'll have the quiz on at the end of the day today. So when we get up to our break here, a few minutes before break, I will give you some time to get started on those assignments so you can look them over before we hit the quiz for today. Not yet. <laughs> nice try, though. <coughs> okay, so the next step here is I want to explore these powers a little bit more. You know, we've got x to the fourth to the power of five. What happens to that? Does anybody know what that becomes? There we go, x to the 20th. When we have an exponent, like x to the 4th, and it's raised to another power, here the 5th power, we multiply the powers. Because x to the 4th to the 5th power is saying 
I have five of those x to the fourths that are being multiplied together. Each x to the fourth, of course, is four x's. So if I'm multiplying all those together, there's a total of 20 x's. Or 4 x's 5 times, which is 20 x's, multiplied together. So if I have y to the 8th, the power of 11, I'm going to get 88. y to the 88. Perfect. 8 times 11 is 88. <coughs> If I have two variables, x to the 5, y to the 10th here, I take that to the power of 3. Perfect. Somebody has it there. We take each of them separately. The x to the 5th to the 3rd power, as you said, is x to the 15. Good. And the y to the 10th? Perfect. Y to the 10th to the 3rd power is Y to the 30th. So the multiple variables isn't too bad. Where it gets to be tricky is if we have a number in there. Like 4X to the 7th, Y to the 12th to the 3rd power. The 4 to the 3rd power a lot of people want to jump in and put in 12 because we're, you know, we're used to multiplying when we're dealing with powers. But it's not 12. It is 4 to the third power. Exactly. 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. So 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. The number still goes to the power. Now, x to the 7th to the 3rd power will be x to the 21. And y to the 36. Very good. <coughs> I want you to try this one in your notes quick. See if you can come up with it. <laughs> okay, so... 5 to the power of 4 is 625. There you go. 625. Good. X to the 32. Y to the 60. Three to twelve. Good job. Wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. So now what if we want to take that a step further? And do that. Remember what this means is. 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. So to me, it's easiest to write it out and do the whole FOIL process on it. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Do the outside, 2x times 5. 10x, good. We do the inside, 5 times 2x, 10x, and then we do the last, 5 times 5, is 25. What can we combine here? 
10 X is very good. So the four X squared doesn't change. 10 X and 10 X make 20, just X. Remember when we add, we keep the same name. And 25. A lot of people do make that mistake. So that's, I'm glad you said that. It's good to point that out. <coughs> so I'm going to have you try one in your notes quick. Try that one quick. See what you come up with. Okay, so we got the F for FOIL, of course, means we're going to multiply which two numbers? 5x times 5x, which is 25x squared. Good. The O means we're going to multiply which two numbers? 5x times the negative 3, which is? Negative 15x. Good. The i means we're going to multiply. Negative 3 times 5x, which is? Negative 15x. And the l means we're going to multiply? The last. Negative 3 times negative 3, which is? Positive 9. Good. What can we combine? Negative 15s. So 25x squared, this becomes negative 30x, and then the positive 9. Anybody get that on their own? Cool. <coughs> well, how about going the other direction? So x to the 5th squared, we said, was x to the 10th, right? We defined a while back the square root of 36, of course, equals what? The square root of 36 is 6. And the reason that the square root of 36 equals 6 is because 6 squared equals 36. This symbol, the square root, is asking us what number squared equals that number inside the symbol. So here, if I tried to find the square root of, oops, the square root of x to the 10, what does that have to be? Well, it's asking us what item squared equals x to the 10th? We just saw it. x to the 5th squared is x to the 10th. To get from x to the 5th to x to the 10th, what did we do to the power when we squared it? We did 5 times 2, right? So going the other direction is just the opposite. If we want to take the square root of a variable that's in an exponent like that, we would divide the power by 2. 5 divided by, or 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. It's x to the fifth. So the square root of y to the 30th is going to be what? y to the... Fifteenth, right? You're just going to do 30 divided by 2, which is 15. Or if I did the square root of z to the 8th, that's going to become what? z to the 
fourths. Fourths, very good. Always dividing by two. <coughs> if I had the square root of x to the twelfth, y to the twentieth, z to the sixth. Just like with our other powers, we take each piece separately. What is the square root of x to the twelfth? x to the 6. Good. 12 divided by 2 is 6. What is the square root of y to the 20th? y to the 10th. y to the 10th. Good. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Square root of z to the 6th? z to the 3rd. Very good. So in your notes, I want you to try this one. The square root of x to the 16th, y to the 12th, z to the 40th. See what you come up with. <coughs> there you go. Good job. x to the 8th, y to the 6th, z to the 20th. Each power is divided by 2. So how about this one? The square root of 16, x to the 10th, y to the 24th. Does the square root of 16 become 8? Say no. No, what's it become? What is the square root of 16? 4, very good. We still have to do we still have to do the operation on the number. The square root of 16 is still 4. And then we have to do what we need to with the powers on our variables. It's going to be x to the what power? Fifth, y to the 12th. Okay. <coughs> well, we're going to look at some little bit more complex ones here for a second. 5 to the power of 3 versus 5 times 5 times 5, that is 125. This symbol means third root. So if I ask you for the third root of 125, what that is asking is what number to the third power is 125. So, guys, stay with me. What number to the third power is 125? 5. So the cube root of 125 is 5. Now, if, you're, if you don't know how to calculate the cube root on your calculator, and you don't know the cube roots if you don't have them memorized, which I can't blame you if you don't, there is actually a relatively simple way to do cube roots and other roots. For example, if I want to do the cube root of 1,000, If you guys remember, way back last semester, we did some factoring. <clears throat> if I have 1,000 and I want to factor it, I need to find any number that goes into 1,000. What's one number that, goes, that 1,000 can be divided by? 10. Perfect. If I divide 1,000 by 10, what's left over? 9, if I divide 1,000 by 10, 1,000 divided by 10, we get 100, right? 
Now, both of those can still be factored. They can still be split into smaller numbers. What is a number that divides into 10? Five. five. And if I divide five, 10 by five, I'm left with two. two. Now, both of those are what we call prime numbers. They can't be split up any further. <coughs> What's a number that divides into 100? 50, okay, if we divide 100 by 50, what's left over? Two, right? Two is prime, so we're done with the two. What's the number that can divide into 50? Five, and we're left with 10, very good. The five is prime. The 10, however, can still be split into five times two. So what we have there for factors, and I'm gonna put them in order, I have one, two, three twos. So one, two, three twos. I have one, two, three fives. <coughs> now, a third root, if I write these in power form, three twos is two to the third. Three fives is five to the three. A third root does what to the powers? It divides them by three. If you think about it, if a square root divides the power by two, the third root would divide it by three. X to the twelfth, third root would be X to the fourth. Twelve divided by three is four. So a thousand is three twos times three fives. The cubed root of a thousand is just a two and a five, or ten. If you double check that in your calculator, ten to the third power does give you one thousand. If I wanted to find the cubed root of one thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight, I can start factoring. What's a number that goes into 1,728? 144. 144 goes in there. Very good. And if I divide by 144, I'm left with 12. 144, what's the number that can go into 144? 12. 12. And I'd be left with how much if I divided by 12? 12, good. Now this 12 can be split into what? Six times two. Six times two, and of course the two is prime. In fact, I can do that to every 12. Six times two, the two is prime. Six times two, the two is prime. The sixes can still be split into? Three times two. Three times two, now both of those are prime. So now I've prime factored that. How many twos are there? <coughs> there are six. How many threes are there? Three, right? And I want a third row. I should have put the three up there. I want a third row of that. So what I'm going to do is divide the powers by three. What's six divided by three? Two. What's three divided by three? One. So what we have is two squared times three. What's two squared? Two times two is four. Times three, which is twelve. The cubed root of one thousand seven hundred twenty-eight is twelve. Of course, we knew that from our cubic feet and cubic inches, right? So let's do another one. So the cube root, I'm going to have you try this in your notes quick. Cube root of 3,375. See what you come up with.
So try to factor it. <coughs> to help you along a bit, can anybody give me one number that goes into 3,375? Five will go, yep. So that would leave us with six. 75. The so 5 is prime, so keep going with the 675. What's the number that divides into 675? 5 divides into it, that's prime. So we're going to end up with 135 left. What's something that divides into 135? 5, which will leave us with 27. What divides into 27? 3 and 9. 3 and 9, good. 3 is prime. 9, of course, splits into 3 times 3, good. So this is 3 to the 3rd times 9 to the 3rd. We're doing a third root. So, it's going to be 3 to what power? Third divided by 3 is 1, right? 9 to the third is going to be 9 to what power? 1, perfect. So this is just 3 times 9, or, sorry, I don't know where I got the 9 from. Sorry about that. What was the factor that should go in there? Five. So it should be five to the one. That looks better. So it's just three times five or 15. So the third root of 3,375 is 15. And if you double checked it, 15 to the third is 3,375. All right, so what I want to do right now um, we have about five or six minutes left to your break. I want you guys in your big book to start working on these pages here. If you guys can work quietly for the next five or six minutes, we'll let you work right up until break. And then we'll take our break. <coughs> so... Get us back down to the bottom of the page here. So with what we've learned so far, this one shouldn't be a shock to you. So we're taking a fifth root now. What do you think is going to happen to the powers on the variables? Divided by 5. So it'll be x to the 4th and y to the 7th, right? 35 divided by 5 is 7. <coughs> we have a third root of, oh, let's see here, 216, x to the 21st, y to the 12th to the 30th. The variables should be pretty easy to work with. We'll come back to the number in a little bit. So it should be x to the what power? 7, y to the 4th, and z to the 30 divided by 3? 10th. Very good. Okay, so now we need to deal with that 216. Now, a lot of you have an X root or an N root key on your calculator you can do that with. But we've been doing that with the factoring. So if we factor 216, of course, it can be divided by 2. What would be left over? One oh eight, correct? Two is prime, what's the number that one hundred and eight can be divided by? Twenty-eight. 
12. Actually, I think we'll go in there, leaving us with how much? There's a nine. Are either of those, can either of those be broken down further? Twelve can be broken into what? Four times three. Four times three. Good. Three is prime, so I can stop with that. The four can be split into two times two. Two times two. So those are prime. I'm done with those. The nine can be split into three times three. Three times three. Now, if using the powers was a little bit confusing to you, let's just write out the factors like this. I am doing a third rut. A third rut means it takes three factors. So that means in my third rut, I have three twos here. That gives me a two. Think of that as two to the third. When you divided the three by three, we got two to the one. I got three threes here, which will give me a three. Again, three to the third divided the power by three gives me three to the one. Two times three is six. Perfect. So the cubed root of this, the cubed root of 216, x to the 21st, y to the 12th, z to the 30th, is six x to the seventh, y to the fourth, z to the tenth. Okay, so it looks like you guys have that down pretty well. So let's move on. Our next step, we're going to be looking at combining these powers more, but I'm going to look at powers of 10. Now, if we have just like 10 to the fifth times 10 to the third, we can actually calculate those out. But with what we know of powers, guys, stick with me. With what we know of powers, 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 3rd is going to be 10 to the... What's 5 plus 3 is 8. Remember, when we are multiplying, we add the powers. 10 to the 5th divided by 10 to the 3rd then will be... I heard somebody mumble it, 10 to the second. Because when we divide, we subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2. If I had 10 to the sixth, to the fourth power, that's going to be 10 to the... 24. Because when we do a power of a power, we multiply. And if I had the square root of 10... To the 12th, that's going to be 10 to the 6. Because when I square root, I divide the power by 2. <clears throat> so let's take a look at combining these powers of 10. I might have 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 7th divided by 10 to the 11th. Order of operations tells us we have to do what's on top of this first. What's 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 7th? It's going to be 10 to the... Ten to the 8th times 10 to the 7th? 10 to the 15th. Very good. We add powers. 8 plus 7. That's over 10 to the 11th. Now when we divide, we get 10 to the... Fifteen minus eleven is four. We ten to the fourth. <coughs> well, let's do this to you. What would ten to the eighth times ten to the negative fifth be? But remember, when we're multiplying exponents, we add powers. So this is going to be 10 to the power of 8 plus a negative 5. So we've got 8 and negative 5, that is 3. Perfect. What if we have 10 to the negative 12th 
times 10 to the 20th. 10 to the eighth. Very good. You got negative 12 and positive 20 makes 8. Ten to the negative seventh times ten to the negative fourth. Careful. Remember when you're multiplying, you are adding powers. Negative seven plus negative four, you have negative seven and a negative four makes negative eleven. You had the right idea. <clears throat> yeah, when you multiply exponents, you add the powers. So 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 3rd gave us 10 to the 6th. We subtract. 9 minus 3 gives us 6. We subtract powers when we divide exponents. So what if I have 10 to the negative 8th divided by 10 to the 10th. I have negative 8 minus 10, which is a negative 8 plus a negative 10. So negative 8, negative 10 makes negative 18. Very good. <coughs> How about 10 to the 9th divided by 10 to the 15th? Perfect. 9 minus 15 is negative 6. So 10 to the negative 6. Six. 10 to the negative 11th divided by 10 to the negative 7th. So now remember, we're subtracting powers. This would be negative 11 minus negative 7, which will become negative 11 Plus a positive 7. So negative 11, positive 7 is negative 4. Negative 4, very good. <coughs> 10 to the 15th divided by 10 to the negative 8. What do we come up with? Careful. 15 minus negative 8. 15 minus a negative 8 becomes 15 plus a positive 8. 10 to the 23rd. So let's do 10 to the 6th times... 10 to the 11th divided by 10 to the 5th. What's that come out to be? Well, we got to do the top first. 10 to the 6th times 10 to the 11th is 10 to the 17th. Good. Now divided by 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 12th. <coughs> or I can do... 10 to the 13th times 10 to the 5th divided by 10 to the 7th times 10 to the 3rd. Now again, I have to do everything on top. What's 10 to the 13th times 10 to the 5th? 10 to the 18. Good. 13 plus 5 is 18. On bottom, 10 to the 7th times 10 to the 3rd is 10 to the... 7 plus 3 is 10. And now 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 10th is 10 to the 8th. 18 minus 10 is 8. Well, now let's bring back our negatives. So 10 to the negative 9 times 10 to the 12th 
divide it by 10 to the negative 7. So on top, 10 to the negative 9 times 10 to the 12th is 10 to the... Three, good. Negative nine plus twelve is three. On bottom, we just have the ten to the negative seventh, so there's nothing to do there. So now we have ten to the third divided by ten to the negative seven. Ten to the tenth. Ten to the tenth. Very good. Three minus a negative seven is three plus seven, or ten. So ten to the tenth. <coughs> In your notes, I want you to try this one. Ten to the twelfth times 10 to the negative 20th over 10 to the negative 6. See what you come up with there. Uh, 10 to the 16th, you think? Something seems a little bit off there. This is going to be 10 to the negative 8 on top. You're right. 12 plus negative 20 is negative 8. So now you've got 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the negative 6. Negative 8 minus a negative 6. Negative 8 plus 6. I heard somebody say it there. 10 to the negative 2. <coughs> So let's say we have 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 5th over 10 to the negative 12th times 10 to the 4th. So on top, 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 5th is 10 to the 2, right? 7 plus negative 5 is 2. On bottom, 10 to the negative 12 times 10 to the 4th is 10 to the negative 12 plus 4, negative 8. And now 10 to the 2, 10 to the 2nd, divided by 10 to the negative 8. <coughs> I heard somebody whispering it, 10 to the 10th, very good. 2 minus a negative 8 is 10. So for this one, I'm adding that power in now on the outside there. I have to do everything inside the parentheses first. The fraction bar says I've got to do everything on top first. 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 7th is what? 10 to the 12th. And now we have that 10 to the 12th that you have. Divided by 10 to the 8th, which is what? 12 minus 8 is 4, so 10 to the 4th. Now 10 to the 4th to the power of 5 is 10 to the 20th. Very good, 4 times 5. So, let's throw in some negatives. So, you guys, what do I need to do first here? So 10 to the 11th times 10 to the 6th is 10 to the 5, right? Negative 11 plus 6, negative 11 plus 6 is at negative 5. 
and bottom. 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 11th is... Ten to the seventh times ten to the negative eleventh. Ten to the negative four. Very good. Now we got to do the division here. Ten to the negative fifth divided by ten to the negative four. So we've got negative five minus a negative four becomes negative five plus four. Negative 1, very good. And finally, 10 to the negative 1 to the power of 7 is 10 to the... <coughs> negative 7, we're multiplying. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Good. <coughs> one for you guys to try. Give this one a shot quick. <coughs> Looking at this one, what has to happen first? Obviously inside the parentheses, right? But inside the parentheses, what's that? You have to do the division. That's a fraction bar, which is a part of an enclosing symbol. So we do have to do that division. So the 10 to the 8th isn't going to change right now. The third power isn't going to change. But 10 to the negative 5 divided by 10 to the 11th is going to be 10 to the... Negative 5 minus 11 is negative 5 plus a negative 11. Negative 16. Now we have 10 to the 8th times 10 to this negative 16, which is what? Perfect. 10 to the negative 8. Positive 8 plus a negative 16 to the negative 8. And now, 10 to the negative 8 to the third power. Negative 24. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. So 10 to the negative 24. <coughs> How about this one? We have to do everything inside the root first. On top, we're going to have to multiply here. 10 to the negative 8 times 10 to the 12th is... Are we adding, subtracting, or multiplying? When we do a power, an exponent times another exponent, we add the power. So negative 8 plus 12 is positive 4. Positive 4, good. And now we have to divide. 10 to the 4th divided by 10 to the negative 6. It's negative 4 minus a negative 6. Or, sorry, positive 4 minus a negative 6. Positive 10. And now we have a square root. And if you recall from our variables, the square root does what to the power? Divides it by... 
two. So this is going to be 10 to the fifth. Perfect. <coughs> so let's do a third root. 10 to the seventh times 10 to the negative 19th. Over 10 to the negative 8th times 10 to the 5th. Where do I start? Bless you. Bless you again. Okay, so... 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 19th is 10 to the 5th. Bless you again. Okay, guys. 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 19th is 10 to the negative 12. Thank you. 10 to the negative 8th times 10 to the 5th. Negative three, good. Now dividing the 10 to the negative 12th divided by 10 to the negative third. So that's negative 12 minus a negative three, which is <coughs> 10 to the negative nine. And now the cubed root of 10 to the negative nine We do the power divided by the root. So negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. 10 to the negative 3. Okay. So on top of those two pages I gave you during the first hour, in the big book, On page 345, exercise 13-6. Also on page 349, exercise 13-7. In the little book, it is units 30 and 31. They're going to deal with working with variables, defining things in terms of variables. Also, there is a quiz. If I'll have you go ahead and do that quiz now and get that done before the end of the hour here. <coughs> um, make sure you're picking away at this homework. If we have to go over any of this stuff again on Friday, I'm more than happy to do that. There will be a quiz coming up really soon on this stuff as well.